from the Boston Museum of Science. SciTech Today on NECN. Five, four, three, two, one, now. On SciTech Today, we just looked at a rocket that could change the future of space travel, the key. This rocket is powered by a new type of fuel that could potentially be manufactured on the moon. Joining me now from the Museum of Science is Alex Fiorentino, our nanotechnology correspondent. Alex, tell us about this new research as viewers are scratching their head about <laughs> rocket fuel being made on the moon. Uh, well, Chad, when you're, when you're dealing with space travel, one of the biggest challenges is really fuel. Uh, if you think about it, it takes a lot of fuel for me to move my car just from here to New York. So imagine how much it really takes to move a space shuttle from the Earth into outer space. It's an awful lot. It's almost four million pounds of fuel for every space shuttle launch. Um, and so if we wanted to travel further and explore more of space, we'd need even more fuel. Some, some researchers and some young scientists from Purdue University and Penn State University, though, have started looking at this problem in a little bit of a different way. And their thinking is that, what if we didn't need to bring all this fuel with us? What if we could travel to the moon, refill the tank there, and then just keep going? Sounds like a great idea, but how could you refuel on the moon? Uh, well, you'd really just have to use a kind of fuel that's available there. And that's really exactly what they did. They've created a new kind of rocket fuel that they call ALICE. A-L for aluminum and I-C-E for ice. Uh, and that's really all it is. It's just a mixture of ice and tiny nanoscale particles of aluminum. And if we look at some of the videos from these scientists, we'll see that this fuel really works. The students launch a rocket almost 1,300 feet into the air using only this ALICE as fuel. And so this is particularly exciting because recent evidence suggests that there's significant ice on both the moon and on Mars, which could make this, this dream of a refueling station on the moon a reality. Well, that's all very interesting, uh, but how does this aluminum rocket fuel work? Uh, well, in a sense, it works the same way as pretty much every other kind of rocket, and that is based on the principle that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if I take this balloon and I were to let it go, the balloon would force air out in this direction, whoops, excuse me, in this direction, uh, and so the balloon would fly in that direction. So the balloon, the space shuttle, the Alice rocket, they're really all doing the they're forcing gases out in one direction to create acceleration in the other direction. Um, the difference is that different kinds of rockets use different reactions to force those gases out. Um, so in the case of the space shuttle boosters, they burn a whole variety of chemicals and they actually create an exhaust that contains almost uh, or, or hundreds of tons of hydrochloric acid, whereas the Alice rocket burns only ice and aluminum, and so its exhaust contains only hydrogen gas and aluminum oxide, which makes it a much more environmentally friendly fuel than what's used in the space shuttle boosters. But would this work with any kind of aluminum? I mean, could you load aluminum foil and water into a rocket and somehow ignite it and launch it? Well, the, the answer there is no, and actually um, it's, it's a really important point because in this case the size of the aluminum is really important. It makes a really big difference in how the aluminum reacts. And in fact, this will be true with all kinds of materials and reactions. So to demonstrate this, let's jump over and, and have a little fun with these bottles of soda. So what I have here on the left is a single piece of iron. And on the right, I have the same amount of iron, but it's in many, many tiny pieces. So if I drop these both into these soda bottles, we'll get a sense for the difference between really small particles and slightly larger particles. So this reaction is obviously a little bit different than what happens on the Alice rocket, but the same principle still holds true, that smaller particles lead to faster reactions. So by using nano-sized aluminum particles, the researchers were able to make a fuel that reacts very quickly and generates a lot of thrust. That's amazing. How long before we might see this fuel being used in, uh, by NASA? Uh, well, this, this fuel is still at a very early stage of development, so it'll 
be a little while before we see it on any sort of major spacecraft. But for now, it's, it's already working. Its, its performance is as good as the fuel that's on the space shuttle, or in some cases, close to as good. Um, and it has the added advantages of being more environmentally friendly uh, and also possibly being available on other planets. So I suspect that we might hear more about this Alice rocket fuel in the future. All right. Fascinating, Alice. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chad.